Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Shots from the Winchester podcast brought to you by Greencastle Consulting. I'm your host, Al Green, and today we're going to have an awesome conversation about business intelligence. And we have two subject matter experts right here today. We have Danny Thiel and we have Brad Kinney, and we're going to talk high level on what is business intelligence and why is it important for your business. Um, before we get started, though, we have a shot of uh, whiskey in front of us, and I think, Brad, you said today is... Uh, Pirate's Day? It's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Huh? Talk Like a Pirate Day. <laughs> and so this actually is rum. This is actually right? rum, not whiskey. I had already done a podcast this morning, so we had whiskey this morning. <laughs> now we're having rum, so I'm Al's drinking trashed. way more than I should today. Al's trashed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a shot of rum. All right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. R. Yes, R. <laughs> Woo. So yummy. Ooh. Tastes so good. Not. It's good stuff. Oof, my goodness. Not like fire at all, Danny. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's a little sweetness to it, but then, um, yeah, it's not my vice. <laughs> oh, I, I, I love a good rum. Brad's like fault. A good rum. Really yeah. Good. yeah. How long has it been since you guys have been in? Or are you, or are you guys still in no, service? No, we're, we're, we're both out. Yeah. Um, I, I ETS'd in 2011. Ah, 11, yeah. So, yeah, nice. I was off of active duty 2015. 2015, nice, nice. Yeah, I was uh, 2000. Oh. oh wow, man. Yeah, it's been a while. No way. Did you wear like the pickle suits, man? Like like yeah. <laughs> No. Actually no no. They had the we had the, the camo outfit though, but I didn't have the desert outfits or yeah. the digital um yeah. camo outfits or nothing like that. And they were still BDUs when I was in. Wait, yeah. you ETS two thousand? Mm -hmm. You joined 2000. No, no, I was I joined in 97. Al's like 90. It's like he's I'm really, like, you know, <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> Kevin thinks he's the oldest guy here. It's I thought you were my age. I thought you were oh, like, how old are you? 33. Oh, no, wow. I'm, that's I'm, a compliment. I'm 31. But I thought Dude, you were like. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm close I'm to 50. I'm not trying to call you old, but. No, Al's just clean that's living. That's what it that's is. That's surprising. Yeah, no, I, I, I just turned 48 um, August 1st. Yeah. I still don't believe you. Yeah. I feel like you're, you're lying to me. <laughs> but right I appreciate now. that. Yeah, There's I a portrait like... of him somewhere in like an attic. You know? <laughs> That's how that goes. It's funny. Oh, somebody man. sent me a picture of somebody from 1973 or 74. And um, it was a guy standing with a bunch of other people. And the guy looked like me. And he sent me the picture. It's like, dude, you're a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth. I was like, no, this is not That's me. Hilarious. It just happened to look like me. No, yeah. no, no, I just got some decent jeans, I guess. But yeah, I don't. Gonna, I don't. My wife's going to ask me, like, how'd work go to them? Like, mm -hmm. I. There's a guy who I thought was like 32, and I thought he was crazy. <laughs> and he's like 50. That's like the story of the day right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's jump in. Um, let's talk about business intelligence. Um, I'll start with you, Danny. Um, can you tell us what is business intelligence and why is that uh, an important component for your business? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with kind of the textbook definition. Mm -hmm. So the textbook definition, in my own words, is essentially using technologies and strategies or processes mm. to take all the information that a business collects and turn it into actionable insights for mm. business decision makers. Mm. So a lot of information comes into the organization and you want to use it to, to guide the organization. Nice. That's business intelligence. So that's kind of the, the textbook definition. I'll mm. let Brad kind of maybe elaborate on how we look at that more in depthly at Greencastle. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Thanks, Danny. Right. So not only are we checking out the descriptive analytics and the data visualization piece that, that lives inside of traditional BI, but we also broaden our, our viewpoint into the more larger analytics landscape, mm. looking at predictive, predictive analytics as well as um, prescriptive. Right. And thinking about also going into environments that tend to have fractured data landscapes or a bit of a chaotic governance structure. And we like to come inside and bring a bit of that order from the chaos mm. and set up governance, set up data marts, set up uh, an overall grand strategy for businesses to actually take their data and, and do those actual insights that Danny mentioned. Everyone knows that data is super important, mm. right? And everyone wants, okay, great, we, we have to have the data. Yeah. Well, you get the data, mm. but it's just everywhere. Yeah. Right? What, do, what do you do then? Like, how do you actually get the, the Legos that are strewn out everywhere and not only sort them into their colors and, and their component blocks, but actually figure out that, like, oh, this is supposed to be a fighter jet, and mm. I can actually build a fighter jet now, right? So it's the, the BI work that goes beyond just the basic getting the data and putting it somewhere that, that actually drives the real value. Yeah, we uh, take the good idea, Ferry, of let's be data-driven and make it a reality. <laughs> right. 
So let me ask you then, what are some of the, uh, the typical work tactics that you use to get that job done? Yeah, so here at Greencastle, we have a methodology that we follow mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. helps connect business and, and technical, mm -hmm. right? And so we have a four-step process that we follow whenever we're going to come into an organization, understand their needs, mm -hmm. and try to turn that into some actionable report, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, our four-step process is first uh, linking up with individuals involved in the business, stakeholders, mm -hmm. understanding their needs and doing an assessment of the current environment. Mm -hmm. From there, we'll start to get a little technical. We'll go into data modeling. We'll look at what data is available and how we can make that all talk to each other mm. in a way that gets all the information in one place. Mm. And then we'll go into the third step, which is iterative report development. Mm. So that's where you start actually seeing a report, right? The, the end user can see something on the screen, start to interact with it and provide feedback. Mm. And then once that process is finished, we'll go into deployment and training. So we'll take that report that was built We'll deploy that out so it's usable, mm -hmm. and then we'll train people how to use it, both on the front end, meaning the business user in the field. Hey, what you know? Where do I click? How does this work? What information does it provide to me? Yeah. As well as the back end, so like an operational analyst to maintain it over time. Wow. So that's our our kind of methodology that we use to implement business intelligence, which is generally applicable in, in any environment. And I think that one of the things that we do here at, at Greencastle, mm -hmm. um, we take this business intelligence implementation methodology, right? This mm -hmm. BIM you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that we have. And that's actually a subset of our broader implementation methodology mm -hmm. that I'm sure you've talked about on the podcast before, uh, mm -hmm. whether it was you or, or maybe a, a separate host. Yeah. And so it really is a subset, all right? You've got the project management, the process improvement, the change management, and you also have budget controlling and business intelligence all kind of align together and, and work together mm. uh, under similar methodologies. That's important to, to note. Yeah, for sure. Because um, all the services um, complement each other in that in that way. Um, speaking to you, uh, Brad, uh, could you tell us a little bit about the programs that you use to deliver the, the best uh, results? Sure. So ultimately, it's going to depend on what the client is comfortable with us using. Mm -hmm. And we will go into a client environment, and if they have, if their IT structure is laid out such that we can only use tools A, B, and C, then we're going to use tools A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. We right. will we will fitfo and get stuff done, mm -hmm. and and sort of accomplish the mission. Mm -hmm. um, for other tools that are very very useful and, and interesting. I definitely think that Microsoft's Power BI product is very powerful. It has a good visualization interface. It is very user friendly and has very strong data manipulation, data cleaning on the front end using um, Power Query. Mm. Uh, also in the visualization front, uh, Tableau is, is one of my favorite uh, programs that, that is out there. Uh, then going back to the data side, uh, Python and R are great kind of um, high level programming languages that are used not only for the data manipulation itself, but also going into that predictive and prescriptive analytics piece that, that we touched on earlier. Mm. Yeah. yeah so, oh, go ahead. So, well, yeah, so for any technical people listening, they'll, mm. they'll understand the nature of uh, the nuance between some of these technologies. I think the, a, a way to kind of broaden that, that understanding is maybe different dialects of the same language. Mm. Right? So you have certain languages in certain parts of the world that are very similar to each other, but there are certain nuance differences. Mm. And so what we do here at Greencastle is we ensure we have a methodology that can um, adapt to different yeah. dialects mm. of the same language so that we're able to go into these different client environments and action with what technology they're using. Uh, Interesting. And, and Interesting. fit into their team and their environment. Ah, that means you have to be pretty high level understanding of all the different programs that some of these places are going to be using because uh, I could walk into some place not understanding Microsoft um, Really easily because I don't understand Microsoft, <laughs> but but you guys you guys Microsoft? understand all these like yeah. programs walking in um, and are is there any point where you have to implement a new program for um, for a group um, who maybe doesn't understand that and then have to educate them on that? Yes, right. You have to consider that even in some large organizations, depending on their their IT structure, mm -hmm. right? A lot of the information and the subject matter expertise might be locked up in that in that silo, mm. and the business has a hard time kind of getting into understanding that, mm. right? Sort of like if you think about the operational wings for for different companies, yeah. they may not have those SMEs out there. We're very adept at coming in and understanding what IT is already talking about and being that translation layer mm. between the IT folks and the business users in actually implementing these these uh, these technologies. 
right? Yeah. yeah. So one way I would frame that up is what, what we do is final mile technology consulting. Yeah. So you have a lot of businesses who have already at large scale, right? We work with, with large companies who spend a lot of money on technologies. Mm. It's that final mile of getting the, the final business users to engage with these things and get the value out of it that yeah. often gets missed. Mm. IT will do their part. They'll get a system integrated. Mm. They'll implement certain things. The business knows what they want to get out of it, but mm. they can't quite do it. So we'll come in and we'll bridge that final mile gap mm -hmm. to help the business get the value out of some of the technologies that they're investing in. Yeah, that's really cool. So what are some frequently asked questions that you face with your clients right now? Like what is some, something that is uh, um, common when you walk in the door? So if we're going into a uh, into an engagement where there's been a data transformation or, or a platform move or something like that, mm -hmm. a very common question is, where's my report? Right, because mm. they're used to having it in some some older legacy system, where they don't even know where, if, or when it exists in, in the new system. Mm. And where we can kind of come in is look at that. Okay, where's my report? And understand that. Okay, well, we need to build a report, but that links to the data. So where's the data? Right? Mm. Does it live inside of some SQL databases somewhere? Um, who do we talk to inside of the IT or the data architecture uh, infrastructure? Mm. How do we understand where that data is actually ultimately coming from, from say a source system, mm. right? Because our clients don't understand necessarily that middle layer reporting uh, system. What they understand is, hey, I'm filling, my people are filling out their timesheets in system X. Mm. I used to have a report that I could run. It's not there anymore. How can you help? Mm. Right? And so we're the folks who can actually come in and, and bridge those gaps between this new system that was stood up and that final mile that Danny talked about earlier and showing a, a brand new uh, fun report that people can actually get some, some good insights out of. Yeah. Understanding that, what is the goal or the end game, I should say, for business intelligence for, for a, a company? What, what, what should a company expect? Former state to the, the state we wanna leave them with yeah. is that before we come in, likely the reason we're coming in is because company leadership doesn't have at timely access mm. to the information they need to guide their decision making. Mm. And when we leave, we want to make sure that all the bus business decision makers and leaders have the answers that they're looking for at their fingertips at all times. Brad mentioned earlier mm. how our business intelligence service mm. offering integrates in with a lot of the other things we do here at Greencastle. Mm -hmm. One of those things is change management. Mm. So part of, I, I mentioned our four-step process earlier, the, the last step is deployment and training. Mm -hmm. So our goal is not just to, oftentimes what you'll get in, in companies is you'll have business and you'll have IT. Yeah. And business will tell IT, hey, I need that thing. And IT will say, here you go, good luck, mm -hmm. right? And the business will be like, wait, I don't know what to do with this or this isn't even what I wanted, right? right. And that's not what we do. We come in and we, we craft exactly what the business needs and we train the business end user in how to use it, mm. right? So we're, we're not leaving them wondering or trying to figure something out. We're doing technical documentation. We're doing back-end training. We're doing front-end training to make sure when we deliver you the finished product, everyone knows how to use it and it's mm. actually useful for them. Nice. And I think that, that training piece is key, right? Because, Danny, you mentioned... Uh, essentially providing the leaders this, this suite of tools and them being able to understand. But a, a key part of that is also enabling their workforce mm. so that after the project is done and we're off helping either another client or the same client with a different problem, that these same leaders can go to their people and say, all right, cool, I've got the new question of the day. I need the answers yesterday. And their analyst workforce can now go in and utilize the tools that, that we built and provide in the training that, that we gave them mm. to answer the questions and, and essentially fish for themselves. Mm. Right. So that's that, that idea of the data democratization mm -hmm. and trying to make that a reality for our different clients. Yeah, what is it? Give a man nice. a fish, you feed him for the day, teach a man <laughs> to fish, and you'll, you'll feed him for life. Life. Yep. Yeah. With all that said, when does a business need business intelligence? When does a business know they need business intelligence? Like, what is the sign? This is like, uh, oh, if this is happening and this is happening, you need business intelligence. If there's a, always a, a disconnect between... Mm -hmm business and technical mm. and for some reason that's not connecting we'll come in and we'll bridge that gap mm. um, so a, a, another way of, of you know framing that or answering that question 
is to say if, if your business and your analysts are always fighting fires mm. and things are popping up and it's all reactionary, mm. then you need business intelligence because business intelligence should proactively provide you answers to the questions you're looking for. Mm. So there shouldn't always be a scramble in a firefight when new things in the business pop up because you should have clear insights into your business. If you mm. don't have clear insights in your business, then you need business intelligence. Mm. Yep, or you're operating off of your gut feeling, mm. right? And and we always talk about being data-driven decision makers. Well, that, that means you have to have actionable data, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, we kind of operate on, on what our gut says. And as, as, uh, as I learned in my... Uh, in my stats classes back in the day, humans are actually really bad at, at um, either being a random number generators or b you know going with their with their guts uh, for for data driven things. Wow, wow! Now, just to get a little insight on the two of you, um, mm -hmm. you your position here is so I'm the former director of business intelligence. So currently, mm -hmm. I'm leading one of our clients and helping them realize the full value of Greencastle service offerings. Mm -hmm. One of which being business intelligence. Nice. And then, yeah, Brad is currently leading our, our business intelligence service offering here. Yep, I I exactly. So I'm heading up the, the BI team mm -hmm. here at Greencastle. Nice. Um, I'm a uh, senior business intelligence consultant, and we've got a, a team of really smart people uh, working and actually doing all, all the, the awesome things. I know BI is uh, running with a, a new app. Um, what is the name of that app, and what is it used for uh, in what we do here is at uh, Greencastle? Yeah, so recently, if anyone interested is, uh, if anyone listening is interested in kind of finding out more about what we do, what Al's talking about here is we've built a uh, demo oh. app in Power BI mm. that's very interactive and shows all the functionality that we can provide to your business. Mm -hmm. um, so shout out to John Lombardi. He's kind of building that out, doing the final mile of, of that for us. Nice. And uh, so, again, if anyone's interested in learning more about our service offering, and really what that end product could be, mm. then uh, ultimately we recommend working with Power BI. We'll, again, we'll work with any technology as we referenced earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but that Power BI apps provide a, an opportunity for the business to consume things uh, when they want them, where they want them, mm. and be able to interact really powerfully, assuming mm. that that business uh, is already on the Microsoft suite. So oh. um, yeah, we have a great demo app out there. We're really proud of it. It covers a few different areas will service any business, uh, any business wing, if you will, any any area of a business. So, this app covers financial reporting, so business intelligence for finance. It covers business intelligence for operations, mm -hmm. so making sure you're you're getting stuff done efficiently and on time. Um, and then it also covers business intelligence for project management. Mm -hmm. So Greencastle has a huge project management uh, wing, and and we do a lot of consulting in that space. And the business intelligence team has partnered a lot with the project management team to ensure that uh, any project stakeholders or portfolio managers or mm. CIOs or whoever have great insight into the projects that are going on in their uh, organization. So mm. I'll just take that as an opportunity to, to kind of frame this up to say business intelligence isn't just like an IT thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's for operations. It's for finance. It's for project mm -hmm. management. It's for HR. It's for whomever. Um, we could really come up, come in and help any of these departments uh, yeah. leverage their data. Yeah, sort of like mm -hmm. a, a force multiplier mm. to help business leaders own their battle space, mm. right? To you know, bring some of the, the, the cool. veteran terms. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. So. Yeah. laughs> oh, well, that's awesome, guys. Um, is there anything left that you guys want to um, add about BI before we uh, close this down? How we could provide the most value to our clients usually when it comes down to training that our clients workforce. So we want to come and implement best practices, mm -hmm. train the workforce, and set the organization on its way to success without needing us forever. Nice. Very, very good information, guys. I really appreciate your time um, and being able to uh, help us learn more about what business intelligence does and, um, and how it works for businesses and stuff. So yeah, yeah. thank you yeah. for doing this, Al. And yeah, yeah. If anyone needs that final mile business mm -hmm. technology consulting, mm -hmm. um, where we could help them thrive and become data driven, truly, then yeah, reach out. We're here for it. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Well, Danny, thank you so much. Thank Brad, you, Al. Al. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, make sure you like and subscribe to Shots from the Winchester podcast. Make sure you stay tuned, and uh, we'll talk to you later.